I'm cutting the pattern pieces out of duck canvas, which I very cheaply thrifted from my local thrift shop. The total cost of this project was $10. I'll talk more about my fabric choices later and how I was unhappy with them. I'm putting this day's pieces together. Later I will base stitch the two layers together, treating them as one piece from then on.
I start by working with the two front pieces of the stays. I've cut two layers from canvas and one from a cotton fashion fabric. I also cut a narrow strip out of the canvas to reinforce the center front opening of the stays where I will embroider the hand sewn eyelets. I folded the paper pattern on all of the lines indicating the boning channels. With a pencil, I'm lightly marking all of the boning channels that I'll later sew. I repeated the process on the two back panels. I chose to have this pair of stays front of course, you can always choose to have just front, just back, or both front and back opening stays. I sewed the facing strip onto the front edges of the stays to reinforce the section where I will eventually sew the eyelets. Then sewed boning channels on either side of the eyelet panel. Okay, stop. Hold on. I messed up. Completely messed up. So, disclaimer. This video is about my experience with the red threaded pattern that I used according to my body type and at my level of sewing experience, which I would say is intermediate. Now, this is by no means a red threaded pattern review. I don't have anything negative to say about Red Threaded's patterns. I think that they are amazing, they are great, and it fit me straight out of the package with zero altering. I even did zero grading, and I didn't do a mock-up beforehand uh, before I made this pair of stays. So I literally have nothing bad to say. Um, the worst thing I have to say is on my part that I did not do um, what I should have done, which was read the instructions. Um, I did not read the instructions like I should have, and that's where I ran into some trouble. So um, the, the problem area that I had the most problem with was the front uh, sections of the, the, the center front of the stays. Um, and that was where the horizontal boning channels meet the vertical boning channels. Okay, so I'll show you on the stomacher. It's the same sort of setup. Okay, so you can see how there are vertical boning channels and there are horizontal boning channels. So what I did is I just, you know, um, I take my layers and then I put my uh, 
boning in between my layers and I take my zipper foot and then I sew next to my boning to create the channel. And so what I did is I just sewed them straight down and I was like, oh wait, but how do you do these horizontal ones? And I was like, how in the heck do you do that where they intersect? I'm like, do you just lay them over the top? like as a separate separate sewn-on attachment like how, how is this how is this done I um, mean this is the technique that I have never done before in any of the stays that I've ever made um, is you actually start or backstitch up here at the top edge and then you sew down next to your boning and then you sew horizontally across this horizontal boning and then straight up next to this boning which is then vertical and then you end up here at the top of the um, the this is the stomacher but you end up here at the top where you started yeah in a square like in a square and i had never done that before and i just thought that was the weirdest thing like that can't be right let me reread this again and it was it was right and that's how you get those vertical and horizontal boning channels in there and that just completely completely blew my mind finally when i figured it out i then proceeded with the stomacher in the same way the correct way that is For the boning, I used half inch cable ties. If the ladies from American Duchess can use them, so can I. Here I'm flat filling the center back seam of the stays. After sewing all of the boning channels, I inserted the cable ties, cutting them to length, with craft scissors, not sewing scissors, of course. After assembling the stays at the side seams, I next work on the seemingly never-ending bias binding. I'm using a running back stitch.
For the tight curves on the tabs, I gathered the folded edge of the bias binding rather than folding over the excess. I prefer this technique for a more polished appearance. I prefer this technique above all others that I've seen, but I can't attest to this being historically accurate. to keep my stays partially laced so I can slip them on over my head. It cuts down on the time it takes to lace them up. <laughs> 